top save from David Rea, because that was banned for the top corner. Super save from David Rea. Oh, what a save by David Rea. I had six or seven stitches here. Uh, the bone was just stuck into the into the skull. When he said my name, that was one of the first times I just felt my my heart beat raising like loads. And he believed me, believed, believed in me since I was very very young. So uh, thanks to him that uh, he chose me to go on trial. Yeah. And uh, thanks to him, I'm, I'm I'm where I am now. I was so confident that I knew it was gonna it was gonna be that year that we we're gonna get promoted to the Premier League. David, what a lovely day. I've uh, brought you down to the beautiful Kew Garden. It's only a stone's throw away, of course, yeah. from the GTEC Community Stadium. But we'll have a little stroll, mate, and uh, chat about your journey so far, if that's yeah. all right. Yeah, of course, no problem. Let's go. Right, mate, let's go right back to the very start. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name <laughs> of the town that you grew up in. It's north west of Barcelona in a small town called Payel. Payel. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. try and try say it. Try it, try it. Pay 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 Payaha. Yeah, kind of. Right. You get yeah. there. You will get there. You will get there. <laughs> right, that's what I thought with me trying to pronounce these uh, words wrong. But let, let's talk about your childhood, mate. And what, what was it like growing up in. Well, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, I had a good childhood. Uh, great family. Family very, very, very close. Uh, two brothers, my mom and my dad. And obviously, a part of the family outside. But uh, yeah, living there was, it was great. I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I needed a lift everywhere I wanted to go, from my mom or my dad or, or, or friends when, when I had the, the age that I could, I could get a lift from them. But uh, yeah, no, it was a great childhood, great place to, to live, and especially 20 minutes from Barcelona and from the beach. And was it always football for you? Yeah, yeah, for me it was just football. Uh, obviously, growing up, you play football for, for fun, you, don't, you never think you're going to be a professional, uh, but obviously if you like it and, and you have the chance uh, and fight for it, you, you can achieve every, anything. So, no, uh, yeah, for me it was just football. Obviously I had the, the mind if, if I wasn't going to be a footballer or whatever. I was just studying and obviously I had the uh, jewellery shop that my mom and my dad used to have, yeah, they have right. two. And I could always work there. Same, my two brothers are jewellers as well, so that's just like a family job. So did you think was that was that kind of the plan? If well, when when did you actually go right? I want to be a footballer. Well, the chance came when when obviously I moved to to Blackburn when I was 16. So, so that I, was the first time you actually thought about. Yeah. I'm gonna do that as a career. Yeah. Uh, that was the first chance I had because obviously, at the time uh, in Spain and at Cornellà where where I was playing, I wasn't doing very well at the time, uh, and I was just finished high school. I was uh, studying um, administration and human resources, like a, I think it's a B-Tech that you call it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when I had the opportunity to go to Blackburn, it was a no-brainer to uh, for me to, to move to England. So I'm, I'm trying to get my head around this because see, you, you're living in a town next to two massive clubs in Spain, Espanyol and Barcelona. Yep. There's also so many other clubs in, in Spain. And I, I know the team that you're playing for were, were a decent level. So yeah. You're going to probably play that down a little bit, but <laughs> it was a decent level. No one else picked you up when you were younger or anything like that? No, it's, I think it's hard in, in Spain to, to get picked at such a young age. Uh, you have to be unbelievable. And obviously Cornellà was, and it still is, one of the best academies in, in Catalonia. Yeah. So you, we always played at the highest level and playing obviously against Espanyol and Barcelona every single year. But, but no, it was, there was one year where we had me, my dad hear rumours that Espanyol were after me, but nothing came into into conclusion, so I just stayed at Cornellà and then I was, I was lucky enough that uh, I got the trial at Blackburn and then I signed for, for Blackburn. We'll, we'll get to Blackburn and that trial in a bit. So were you playing for your school team and stuff as well? We don't, do, we don't have that in, in Spain. Really? You, you go to school to, to learn, you don't have a, a sports team. You don't have a sports team, you don't play. You do PE, but that's as a, as a subject. Oh. But you don't have an extra uh, outside of a school, you don't have any any extra activities or anything like that. So who were you playing for until you joined Cornell? My town, uh, Corbera de Llobregat, that's another town next to where I used to live, because I lived in a mountain, yeah. and 
it's like um, Sopalleja is on, underneath, and then you have La Palma de Cervelló, and you have Corbera de Llobregat here. And these three towns are like my, my towns, because they're yeah. so close and I have friends everywhere. Uh, but I used to play for, for Corbera de Llobregat. And you played in goal for them? Yes. So, where does this ability with your feet come from? <laughs> uh, well, when I was, obviously, when I, when I was growing up, uh, playing in goal and then meeting up with my friends, uh, we have a... Uh, like two minutes from my house is a futsal pitch where every Sunday we used to meet all, all friends and then a lot of people from from the town used to used to play futsal there with with friends and do like a like a tournament or just had to have fun and obviously you, you don't want to go and go you take you take turns and obviously playing out outfield in there that just developed my ability to to get it uh, yeah. with the ball at my feet and then so who who were your footballing heroes growing up then? Uh, Casillas, obviously, uh, what he's done for, for Madrid and, and the national team is, is incredible and obviously my dad uh, supports Madrid and that's what I saw in, on the TV. So you supported Real Madrid as well growing up, right? No, because no. uh, I've never been a fan of like supporting the team in, in, in that way. Really? Uh, I always said I liked the Premier League a lot uh, when I was young and I, I used to watch a lot of Liverpool and Arsenal and, and the Premier League basically. Were there any goalkeepers in England that you liked? Uh, Van der Sar, uh, Bartes. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned Bartes and obviously Casillas, and we spoke just before we started recording and yeah. about particularly both of their heights. And it, this is something that gets thrown around with goalkeepers, especially in England, we were saying actually, <laughs> because it doesn't seem to be the same in Spain. Everyone mentions a goalkeeper's heights, and it's something that has been said about you, which I think is ridiculous. I know I'm short, but you're not short, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're tall. Um, do you think there's a weird thing in England about keepers' heights? Uh, I think it is. I think it's what the, they've been used to of having like a, a tall keeper from, from years. Yeah. But I think I've shown that I'm good enough with my height and I'm not saying I'm small. I'm, I'm, six, I'm over six foot, so yeah. I wouldn't say I will, I'm a small keeper or whatever. But you can see all, all the stats or whatever that people think a tall keeper will come for everything and crosses wise or everything, but it's more of the mentality and the agility that you have. So, again, at no point in your career, because we said there we never got picked up, you never got picked up by clubs, you, you don't yeah. think that at any point people were looking at you and going, oh, maybe he's a little bit smaller than your traditional keeper, because it's not a big thing to spend. Maybe yes, maybe not, you, uh, I will never know, but I like to think that's not the, yeah. it, it wasn't the issue, it's just I wasn't in the right place at the right time or I wasn't playing good enough or stuff like that. But, but yeah, it's, a, it's something that I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I show every week that I'm good enough to, to play in goal. And then you keep saying maybe I wasn't playing good enough. Are you, are you, are you a big critic, critic of yourself? Yes, yeah, I know when I've, when I've made a, like when I had a good game and I know when I had a bad game and I know when I can do better or when I can, when I cannot or when it's my fault, when it's not my fault. Uh, obviously, we, I try to work with, with the coaching and staff to, to get those those things right, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a critic of myself that I know when when I've done something right and when I've done something wrong. Were you always like that, even younger? Yeah, yeah. Really? The, the good thing when I was young, it was uh, obviously my dad and my granddad. They they were the ones that were taking me to to the to games and to training. Obviously, sometimes my mom as well. Mm. But I was very very lucky with my dad because obviously I had friends where well, like teammates that the dads were very into them and like having a go if they had a bad game or yeah. stuff like that. But my dad was so free to let me explore and to let me have fun. That was the main the main reason that I was playing football at that such a young age. That when you when you are eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, you have to enjoy football. You don't have to think is you're gonna make it to the top because you're gonna stop enjoying football and making it like a put put pressure onto onto your head. So with my dad was was so easy to to be to grow, be growing up as a and enjoying football at, at such a young age. Do you think that's especially important with goalkeepers if you put too much pressure on yourself? Yeah. Because there's already natural pressure being the last line of defence. I, I think so. I think pressure is nice. Pressure is good. To to have pressure is something that is is all right. But it's what you put on yourself. If you believe in yourself, you don't care about what other people think. And yeah. if you think you're good enough and and everything, that's, that's the, the right mentality to, to have, a, at least that's what worked for me. Yeah, right, so let's get into it then. So, 
you, you get this. How did it come about, the Blackburn movie? You, trial period, or you went over to train with them? Um, so the year before, uh, the year before uh, Hugo Fernandez signed for for Blackburn, he was wanted for from a few teams, and then he decided to go to Blackburn, and they did like a like a type of a contract between Cornellà and Blackburn that every six months they were coming to to watch us train, and they were picking a few players to come on trial, different age, like yeah. from on the eights, on the nines to on the sixteens. And then my goalie coach spoke to the the sports director in Cornell and said, David needs to go. He's, he has the right mentality to to be able to live out, uh, out, uh, abroad and to live on his own. So they decided for me to, to go on trial in 2011 for four days. I, I like them. Uh, they like me and then uh, they said, because I was 15 at the time, I, want, I had to go on trial again until I was 16 to move, move, move over. So in October the same year, I went on trial for two weeks. And from there, you see you sign in, in January. Your coach said you had the right mentality. Was that, was that because you'd, had you already moved away from your town? Or, or no, or, or, so what, what? He, he knows me, very, he knew me very well and he still knows me. He came for, I, I have a good relationship with him, obviously. I, I owe him a lot. But uh, he just knew the, the world rate that I have and, and I think the, the right values I have in my head to, to be able to, to handle to be alone and, and to move away from, from my family and, and he, he knew that I was going to do everything I could to, to make it to the top yeah. and he believed, me, believed, believed in me since I was very, very young so uh, thanks to him that uh, he chose me to go on trial yeah. and uh, thanks to him I'm, I'm, I'm where I am now. When you, when you were on that trial, is it, can you remember how you felt, you, you spoke about enjoying football, is any of the pressure turning up now? Are you, no. no. No, I was there to just to, to enjoy and I, I didn't I didn't expect to sign for them straight away. Yeah. It was just a, a weekend that we played two games, maybe two or three training sessions uh, with the under 15s and the under 16s of Blackburn and I was just enjoying the, the experience. Yeah. It was obviously the, if you compare the academies or, or the training facilities, for example, from Cornellà to Blackburn, there's nothing to compare. Like we had one pitch that we had to share it with, or maybe over 50 or 60 teams that we had in, in Cornellà. So sometimes we were training in a square and then training at Blackburn, full pitch, uh, like natural, well. nat yeah, carpet. First time I trained in, in um, natural grass, so. It was just something incredible and just to live the experiences. They, you have no time to put pressure on yourself. Yeah. And did you know much about Blackburn before you, you yeah. came over? Yeah, of course. I, I knew obviously they, they won the, the Premier League in 1995. Uh, obviously, Michel Salgado signed uh, course, from Madrid yeah. there as well. So I knew, obviously, I knew what Blackburn yeah. was. So, uh, but it was mind blowing just to see. The facilities they had, they obviously they have the the academy and they they have the STC, the Senior Training Centre, yeah. on the top. So have they have two different type of academies for the first team and the under 21s, and then the academy on oh, the, on the two other side. Huge so sites. they have yeah two huge. They must have had in total 15, 16 pitches, and they have the indoor a swimming pool, oh, sand pit, uh, three or four gyms, and. And I've never seen that before. Yeah. So it was something mind blowing to to see and to experience. Did that give you like that when you had that taste for it? Were you like, right now this is one track mine. I'm gonna. That's what I want to. I want to be there every day. These kind of places. If it's not Blackburn, I'm gonna show someone else that this is what I want to do. Yeah, that's that's something that you because you, it's the first time you see it. You you want to experience it every day. Yeah. And it was something that I really I really liked. And and if you if you know me, like I train. Like it's my last day, I always train fully and, and I like to train, so that's why I think that's why uh, Blackman wanted me because uh, yeah. uh, there was something special about me that they decided to give me the chance and, and since then I've never moved, moved back. What was it like compared to where you'd been like training-wise in the academy and the style and stuff like that? Was, was it different? Obviously it's different. Uh, we trained in the mornings at Blackburn. Uh, in Spain, I used to train sometimes 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
Really? Is that cause because it's cooler or? No, because we finish a school at five. What? So what time did you start school? We started school at eight until one, break for two hours, and then three until five. What? That's like a whole day. That's like yeah. So that's, that's why. What do you do now? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. Obviously, that was my my training. And my training days were normally four, three or four days a week. Yeah. One day only, just with the keepers. So you, you've arrived in Blackburn, sixteen years of age. Yep. You're still on sixteen. How how was that? Because <sighs> tough. It, yeah. I was. I think that was one of the toughest uh, things about moving to England. Obviously. The weather and the food were the worst things. Obviously, obviously missing family and friends. Yeah. That was that was the main thing. But to Do you like the food? Uh, huh? Don't like the food. Well, I was having tea at five p.m. That just finished my school <laughs> my school <laughs> <Yes>. class. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, because in Spain you eat really late, don't you? Yeah, well, dinner normally is about nine ten. Right. So it wasn't the food, it was just how early you eat. And the food, obviously, <laughs> as well. Uh, used to having my mum to cook every day for us and and just going to, obviously, to the academy and having having dinner at five. Uh, what kind of that. stuff didn't you like? Or still, do you still it's just, not like? Was it just no, different? No, it's just different. You miss, Ob you just Obviously, miss. The, 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 the food is completely different and the dishes are completely different, so I wouldn't say... I cannot pinpoint of what I don't like or what I miss, yeah. but it's just sometimes as well the quality of the food. Sometimes it, in the Spain is better than yeah. than here. Different type, obviously not the meat, but for example the vegetables or or something else. Sometimes you yeah. feel that back home is is better. You ever have Lancashire hot pot? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but so like, what what are the other? Obviously, you're away from home. I read somewhere that. So the, you play on a Saturday morning, and then a lot of the boys, obviously, in the academy would go home, right? Yep. So then, what would you do? Um, I stay at the at the Dicks. Really? Or, yeah, not on my own. Obviously, we with Hugo was there. Right. And then they signed another Spanish player, and they signed another Spanish player years on. So all the foreigners we were spending time together, and obviously I was lucky enough to to have my English family, let's say like that, where they lived little across the road where where I used to live. Uh, at the dicks, that they, the kids born in Malaga, the mum spoke Spanish, they all spoke Spanish, so I was spending the weekends with them when, yeah. when I was on my own and spent time with them. So that family for me is like my family, my English family, that's how I call it. And um, they helped me loads to, to, to adapt to everything. As I said, it's amazing that you had that. Do you think it maybe if you'd gone to another club and, and maybe not had that, you'd have struggled even more and uh, do you probably think be tempted to have gone yeah probably home? there was i want to tell you something that there was n i've never thought of i'm gonna quit and i'm gonna go home yeah. uh, no matter how tough the time it was i knew what i wanted to to do and the opportunity i had to just to fight for for everything and i never thought that i'm just gonna quit and just gonna go home never thought that that never crossed my mind yeah you, you're so determined and you, you take that time to go on loan to southport a lot of players, especially goalkeepers, have had successful spells in non-league. What do you think that did for you? We've seen Jordan Pickford do it, Nick Pope recently as well. How important was that spell at Southport for you? It was massive. It was, I think, that was the, the turning point of my of my career. Uh, spending three months playing fo uh, men's football, that's how, how we call it. Because the under-21s under were too, let's say, too easy. Because there was no pressure. There was just playing football and there was no league in a way. Yeah. That the, if you win, uh, you win. If you lose, you lose. You like no enough competitive um, mm. in 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 that way. So spending three months <laughs> and knowing what all the players were, were going through, like obviously at Blackburn, I had everything done for me: uh, clothes, uh, breakfast, uh, lunch, yeah. uh, even even dinner, everything. And then when you go to to South Pole, uh, not uh, conference prem. Training in a in a university where sometimes the pitch was you couldn't train on a on a on a on grass, so we had to train on artificial, and you know used to that, and then you have to wash your own clothes and and bring your own so boots. You have to muck in with that as well. Yeah, so something that it was a learning point for me to and a and a touch of reality of I'm so lucky to be a black friend. Yeah, that I need to make sure that I can do everything I can to, to progress and to, 
to take advantage from it. Yeah. Because obviously these players, some some players were. It was it was part time, so we were training Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays in the morning, and then some of the other play, the, some players that couldn't come to training because they were working, and then or working at night, and then or working during the night, and then training in the morning. Yeah, yeah, so that right. was that was like a, a turning point for me to understand what they were going through, and what how lucky I was to to play for Blackburn and, and have the facilities that we have. Yeah, yeah it makes you appreciate it, and make you more yeah. determined to stay there, and then. I think you first came on my radar, mate, when you played Derby County, of course, yeah. in the FA Cup. Um, I've seen, I remember Jake Buxton kind of comes up to you at the end, the Derby player, and like gives you a hug and congratulates you on how amazing you were. What was that like for you, kind of it, seeing yourself on Match of the Day spoken about by these pundits? Because was that the first time you kind of yeah. saw all that kind of stuff? That was, that was obviously my first time of, of seeing me back in, and seeing me back on TV in, in, in that way. and the repercussion that he had outside and the, the next few days. Obviously I had, I think I would say one of, of if not my best game <laughs> of my career. And in, in, in the content that it was, obviously it was the third round of the FA Cup. We nearly get into the replay at, uh, at our ground. My last, my last game for them. So you knew no matter what, that was going to be your last game? Yeah, I wanted to stay. I wanted to prolong, yeah. but obviously the, the club didn't let me. But obviously, that game was the turning point of, OK, I, I had a, a little touch of professional football and obviously David County on that year, they were fighting to get promoted. Yeah. Uh, and Big it was stadium, it yeah, like massive Park? stadium, uh, loads of people and uh, family was there as well. So it was it was everything just I think it was written in the start. I had to make a, a good, a good game. And I think because of that game, that's why I got my debut uh, later that year. Well, onto that, you make your debut at Ellen Road. Of all places, that's a tough place <laughs> tough. to make your debut. Tough. I remember, I remember. I, I remember what the fans were telling me and what the atmosphere it was. It was crazy. It was, we, were, we were lucky, obviously, they got a man sent off and, and the game was a little bit easier. But obviously, as, a, as your debut and then winning 3 0 at Ellen Road, where it's just one of the toughest plays to go in English football, in my opinion, to play yeah. away, uh, it was it was incredible. You say what the fans are saying. Can you remember what the uh, Leeds fans are giving you? Yeah, but I cannot say on camera. <laughs> <laughs> they saw a young goalkeeper there yeah. and took their opportunity. They, obviously, they knew I was, it was my debut, I was young, and they, were, they wanted to put pressure on me and, and stuff like that. And every time I was going for the ball, for the goal kick, or the ball was going out, and it was shouting, or I was on my own there. It was, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a, it's a good memory, and obviously they still, they still do it. Yeah, yeah. But do you, you, do you, you like it? I like it. I, I like it to have a little bit of banter with, with the fans. Always, as always, is like it in a good way. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's part of football. So, uh, yeah. that's something that we enjoy. So then you made your debut for Blackburn. Played again that year. And yeah, then... played the last game of the season, and then. Back up for summer, and then have I really, I really have a really, really good pre-season next yeah. next year, and then the gaffer decides to put me in that uh, as a number one. I played five games, uh, international break. The team not doing great, was not doing too bad. The last game we draw against Bolton at home, now now, first clean sheet of the season, and then we go into the international break, and then when I come back uh, during the week, fine, and then it comes some. I think it was a Thursday or Friday. We're playing Fulham away, so he comes. He, the gaffer, the gaffer tells me to go into the office, so I knew it was going to happen. And he just put, in a way, he just put excuses to to drop me, and for no reason. And then since since that game, I don't think I played a game in a league game in 18 months until I played uh, for Tony Mowbray when Steely got injured the following season. How hard is that for a young goalkeeper? Like you've had that high of playing in that Southport game against Derby, then you've made your debut at Ellen Road, kept a clean sheet, had a great pre-season, played those five games. Like, how do you deal with that? Uh, just being mentally strong, uh, keep working, knowing that I knew uh, I didn't do anything wrong in a way that to get to get dropped. Obviously, I was I was a young goalkeeper. Uh, we had Steely on the bench, and the team went gone well in that in that way and it was the easy option for for the gaffer to to drop yeah. me uh, but it was it was tough obviously it was tough to 
to just be on the bench for, for the next 18, 18 months. And how do you deal with that? Because I don't want to keep going on this, but you're away from home. I guess now you're kind of a bit more integrated into things, into the culture, but it's still very easy to be isolated in Blackburn. So, and then when you're, you're out the team, I imagine there's a lot of time for overthinking and kind of and stuff like that. So how do you get away from football at those times? Do you, like, or do you get away from it? Or are you always... Do you, I remember... I remember slightly more or less how, how I felt back then. It's just, it was a little bit of frustration, you know, because I'd done everything that I could to, to carry on with the team and, and to, to get my career from there to make it the, the biggest step. And it was a bit frustrated frustrated and, and a bit angry in, in a way but you cannot let those emotions to get into you because if not what you're going to do is just give the reason to the gaffer to drop you so you have to even work harder yeah. even harder to to get your spot, your spot back and and obviously uh, I think a, a month later he, he got sacked and then Paul Lambert came and uh, yeah Paul Lambert came and then he left at the end of the season so is it hard for a goalkeeper in that situation as well? Because, like we said, there's, there's one position. So it's yeah. not like if you're an outfield player, you, you might get a look in here or you might maybe play in a different position and then get your way back in another way or there might be three centre midfielders. Do you see what yeah. I mean? No, it's obviously that's, that's the position I play. Yeah. And it's only one position, but you have, you have to be patient and, and when the, you get your chance, you just take it. It did come, and unfortunately yeah. that season, though we got relegated. Yeah, yeah but, I didn't want to but, no, it's associate fine. the two. No, things. but that, I think that was I think that was the best thing that happened to me because obviously I played the last five games of the season. I think we I kept three clean sheets and we didn't we didn't lose a game. Uh, I remember playing against Brentford that Last we won day, yeah. four two or five two, and we had to win by five goals to stay yeah, stay up because we had the same uh, goal di uh, we had worse goal difference than Birmingham, same points and everything. It was like one 0 in their game or something. Yeah. yeah, and and then getting relegated to League One that was my chance to, to obviously to stay there and and play a full season. League one, and we were we got promoted, and uh, obviously going back to the championship, and obviously after a year uh, I signed for Brentford. But that was that was a turning point for me and and for the club the, the club as well. Gained that relegation, there were two, there were the club and the fans, and that relegation used to unite both of them, and and it was really, really important for for the club and and for some players as well, like myself. There was never any temptation to to leave. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I obviously that you when you get relegated and you start thinking, oh, what, what should I do, blah, blah blah. But if you have the opportunity to make a step down to make two forwards, sometimes you've got to do that. Yeah. And as I was young as well, I was I must have been 22, 20, no, 21 probably at the time, more or less. I was still young, so playing League One every yeah. single week. That was massive for, for, for myself to, to get that experience. So it was it was no thoughts of, of leaving or trying to trying to leave. Was Blackburn where you met Stephen Drench? Yes. Is, is, he, he was my under 18s goalie coach. How big an influence did he have? Massive, massive. Yeah. Especially when when I came, uh, he was the goalie coach. Well, there was it was him and a, and a few others, but he was the, the goalie coach. Obviously, I came mid season as well. I came in January 2012. Right. It's not like I, I came as, as a start, so I was training with with under 18s every single day, and then playing for under 16s at the time. But he he knew what how good I was, and different aspects. So, but he tried to explode everything else uh, to make it even a better goal a goalie. And the training sessions we had, it was it was really good. But obviously the he was he was a. Well, he still is a great, a great goalie coach. So it was massive for me to to have him as a as a goalie coach there. Was it he big on distribution as well? And yeah, he could ping it. Oh, well. <laughs> wow! He has one of the best side volleys I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, he's. We used to play every week. Once a, once a week, we used to play foot golf. Because obviously it's a massive field. Yeah. And we used to put the mannequins wherever we wanted. We obviously me, Dilo. Uh, Matthew Irwin, where he plays at uh, Chorley now, one of my really good friends. Uh, it was all three. Yeah. Normally playing uh, uh, football with him, and it was it was fun and something so simple. It makes it so much better 
to progress and to learn and stuff, different type of kicks and different type of of, of strikes and everything. So that was that was really fun. So foot golf, you think, is where you honed a lot of your technique for your distribution? Yeah, yeah, that's that's more as a longer yeah. distribution in in a way. To from the floor, we used to do like, oh, let's do side volley on this one, or let's just start with side volley or from the floor or weak foot. So that it was something that he implemented for us just to have fun but to get better at the same time. Yeah, so you're not even realising that yeah. you're developing. And a little bit of a competition as well. Yeah. We used to bet maybe like who gets this dinner or, or lunch nice. and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. You're pretty lively at the training ground now. Were you, <laughs> were you always like that? Were you like that as a kid? Or yeah, that? no, I've I always, I always been lively and uh, obviously when you when you're a bit younger and you're in the first team and with those characters, I think you you steady a little bit yeah. yourself. You can't go in there straight away first no, exactly. day in a C-Rex costume. Exactly. <laughs> but, but now that I'm, I'm a senior player in, in, in a way, uh, it's easier to, to be more lively and to make more jokes. And yeah. But as well, that give for me, with the young players, for example, with, with Coxie, uh, I try to help him as much as possible, and even not, not Coxie, with, with Benson, with, with Reggie, when they train with us, uh, I try to help them as much as possible. But, but always trying to have fun and, and, yeah. and I've seen like it. That. You're making Coxie do his <laughs> cow impression and stuff. Um, yeah. I, I want to talk to you about, I hope you don't mind us talking about this, is yep. an incident that happened at West Brom and with Jay Rodriguez, a collision yeah. there. And uh, so you've rushed out to meet him at his feet and he's collided with your face. And a lot of goalkeepers that would probably, I nearly swore them, but do you know I mean? Put, frighten them and bait long term <laughs> and have an effect on them. And, Tell me exactly what happened and what you can remember from the incident and did it have any lasting effect? What, what I remember is he had the ball outside the box. He met one of my centre-backs, I can't remember who it was, I, don't know, I think it was Daryl Lenehan, and the ball went inside the box, so I just rushed out, caught it, and then he, he instead of jumping, he just let his foot like this, and right. he just, with my momentum, he just hit him right in the face. I heard a massive crack, and I thought it was my, my draw. But then I started moving, going like this, and it was fine. So I just, just felt all the blood <laughs> dropping. I'm thinking, this is a, this is a bad one. And then when Elliot Bennett came, and Harrison Reed came to see me, they were just nearly throwing up. Oh, uh, they said they, they said my nose were underneath my lips. So obviously that just came out. I had six or seven stitches here. Uh, the bone which is stuck into the into the skull. So that's why I remember going straight out, straight to the hospital, and uh, I was I only missed one game. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> but you said that, so the bone went into your skull. So if if you touch my nose, this. So that's. Oh yeah. But look at this. Oh my word. So all all this bone is just pushed into my nose, into my into could, my skull. Could that not have been even worse? Like. I don't know. I don't know much about uh, science, but isn't I, your brain in there? Like, <laughs> could it not, I, don't like, I don't know, it's just, uh, I, I've not had time to, to get yeah. the operation done, so. So you then, you say one game, were you not one game. nervous, like uh, apprehensive? Like? Uh, I had, uh, after, the, um, after the incident, I went home, so that was on a Saturday. Saturday or, tu or Tuesday, I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what day it was, I think it was on a Saturday. Went home on the Monday of the whole week and then came back. No, it was on a Tuesday night. Mm. I went home on a Thursday. I spent home until maybe Tuesday of Wednesday. And then I trained with a mask. Oh, yeah, Thursday, yeah, Friday and played Saturday. So I missed one game. And coming across it, you weren't? No, um, I was more aware of trying to catch the ball and hit him in my face. Right, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was more yeah. that the fear of having that pain because obviously it, that wasn't it wasn't healed the the match just it was just to protect any objects going to my face or elbows or whatever and the first mask was horrible it was this transparent mask i think there's a few, there's a few pictures you can find them because uh, we didn't have time to get the proper one uh, carbon molded fiber one. molded one but the first one was horrendous to train in and, and to play with because it was, it was so tight and so uncomfortable but the, the, the next match was was much better much, much comf uh, comfier yeah and long term you you don't know going at people's feet now you don't ever nah, think it was it was it's a funny story that as soon as i took my mask off we played uh, Millwall away 
last, it was a free kick on the right hand side, I remember perfectly. I come out for a cross, I punch it, and then one well, of the players just headbutted me and he just uh, I, I, I cut, cut my, my eyebrow. <laughs> it was the first day I took my mask off. So. That was your luck, <laughs> mate. Um, then, look, not, not long after that, you joined Brentford. Was there any other options available to you at the time? Or, like, uh, any, no. Any, no. No. He, I knew uh, I wanted to come here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Iñaki had a big part of it. Cause he, he, saw, he saw himself very, very well at yeah. the club. Yeah. No, obviously. But how do they do that? So he, how, you say you, people always say this. Oh, the club sold themselves well, and they. But what what is it when they? No, doing? obviously I knew if obviously I knew Iñaki, uh, Obviously, what what he showed me, what he wanted to do, what what he wanted to do with me, and and everything. But obviously, obviously the main thing was the club, and I knew how good Brentford was in in a way of playing football and my style of play. That I wanted to play obviously with Blackburn. We was just long balls and then play off second balls. I know, and I knew Brentford, they played really good football. It was just, they were conceding a lot of goals. And yeah. I think uh, the project that uh, we, well, the club had at the time was used to be more defensively solid, but still keeping the, the style of play and everything. So it was, it was a no brainer for me. And at the time I had a few disagreements with the, with the gaffer at Blackburn and during, during the, the first season back in, in the championship. And it was, I felt like it was, my cycle was done at Blackburn, and I need a new challenge to to keep refreshing, and uh, yeah. that's that's why I decided to to say I need I want to go, and then obviously it was a perfect opportunity for me to to sign for Brentford. It was a massive summer, and I don't think we realised it maybe at the time. Yourself coming in, Pontus, Christian, yeah. Matty, Ethan, I think as yeah, well. Yeah, Ethan, yeah. Um, Brian. Yeah, Brian as well, of course. Did did you realise that at the time? Like, no. This is this is a group here. Like, uh, everyone's coming we, in. No, we we started thinking when this we didn't start well this, that season. I remember the mm. first we the first game against Birmingham. Obviously, we didn't carry like ticking. I don't think we kept like we started ticking until October. But I always uh, I said that from the beginning, so many new players, we needed time to to get that bond together. Yeah, and then from October, we just flew. It's mad. I just flew. I remember, and this is ridiculous. I remember some people giving Christian Norgard a bit of stick at the time, <laughs> and I look back and I was like, "He's just moved to a new country." Like yeah, it, it was mad, wasn't it? And I think, like you say, then we just got got going. Is that where then you guys, as you got to know each other a bit yeah. better, and yeah. I you think, realized? I think so. I think that's when, at least when I, when I thought back, this is a, this we could we could be on top here. We can have a chance to to fight for something very very special. So. Uh, no, we. Uh, that's when we realised the, the the work that the club's done in the summer, how it's going to pay off, and I think it's been paying off from since then. Did you realise that if, maybe if it's not this year, we know it's coming soon? Was it was it, or, or did you then think it's going to be this year? Uh, I think when I think after Christmas time, that's when we were like right there on top. We said at least if we don't get promoted automatically, we're going to fight for for the for the playoffs and. And obviously the sign, uh, it was there, and we were, we had, and that year we had a really, really good squad. We were unlucky to, to lose. Obviously, COVID happened as well, and that that made it a bit difficult for for everybody. But no, it was a, a really good first um, first season. I've seen you've you've been asked about this a lot, but I want to touch up the playoff final. And it, your answer is exactly what I think most Brentford fans are saying. You were in the same position that you were staying for all of that. Yeah. Like, how did you feel after that game? Did you feel like you had to say anything to the boys? Was there any, was there any discussion? Did anyone say anything to you? Can you remember what the, the gaffer like after the game? The gaffer said to me, "I want you even higher next year." Yeah. So that I that must be when, amazing for you. Yeah, guys. when when someone asks me about about this, it's just I'm in the same position. I just learned to be a bit more aware of my surroundings and what what could happen. And if that happens again, I don't think I will. I will let that go because if you see the replay, I make a step on my left, just thinking that he's going to cross it, and he just puts it. Yeah, he just yeah. puts it. There. It's a great, it's a great strike. Don't don't get me I wrong. I think that's it. Like everyone forgets. Well, it, like. it is. It, it is what it is. It's just one of them that you you learn from, and and I, I wouldn't take, like I wouldn't change anything. Of, I wouldn't change for anything. Is that another reason why Thomas is so good? Like you say, after the game, he's cut. 
I bet you there's some managers that would have maybe. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah, I think I think it's so good with with the players and the team management that is is so clever in a way that he he knows what to say and and when to say it. So that was just something encouraging for me to because they know how aggressive I am of, of my line and try to help us the team as much as possible on, on, on crosses and balling behind. So that's that's how we play. It's the same as, as the goal we consider against, I think it's against Cardiff when they scored from their own half. Yeah. That's where I've been all season and you prevent more than what, what you concede. So The positives outweigh it, yeah. it for that one three yeah, time it's exactly. going to happen. Exactly. And the, the next season, what, what a season again. and. Tough. Had, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Condemned. We had we, we had eleven days off. I remember, yeah. and, and obviously with COVID, I couldn't go back home. I didn't go home for eighteen months. I didn't I didn't go to Spain. So it was it was it was it was a tough season season. But that shows the work that the club and, and the staff and obviously the players did to to try and do it again. Could get promoted automatically and. We couldn't, and then get it done by by playoffs was was incredible. You think it brought everyone together? Yeah, it was. It was obviously we had 11 days off, and then the whole season we were right on the top, fighting to get in automatically, and then we couldn't. And then we were one more year, more, one year exp more experience, and every player. And and when we were when we beat um, Bournemouth at home, it was. I knew we were gonna get promoted because yeah. we knew what to do and and what in the situation we were gonna be. So we were so I was so calm and and so positive to to know that we were gonna get promoted that year. That's mad that you were that. See, even we're in so that, comfortable, in confident, that yeah. pressure environment, yeah. you still. No, I was so confident that I knew we was gonna it was gonna be that year that we were gonna get promoted to the Premier League. I love it because Pontus was similar, wasn't he? And he kind of said, "Look, when we lift the trophy." At at Wembley, Peter, you're going to be there as yeah. well. So it's amazing to hear that that confidence was throughout the squad. And look, since you've you've been in the Premier League, mate, it's just it, the rise is just still every day. It's just getting better and better. And you you've taken to it like a duck to water. And how have you found now the kind of the attention you're getting? Because uh, in the Championship, you're making a name for yourself. But now you've got people like Jurgen Klopp saying he should have a number ten on his back and. Everyone's talking about you, and rightly so for your performances, your saves and stuff. It, it, it must be mad. Like again, coming from no disrespect, that that lad that was playing at Southport <laughs> not too long ago to Jurgen Klopp, one of the best. No, it's, in the obviously, world. obviously, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit mental, it's a bit crazy. But uh, I know, like I said before, I'm very critical with myself, and and I know I've done well, I've done bad. But I don't like to pay attention to what the news says or, or whatever. Obviously, it's, it's great that club said that about me last year when when we played at home, when we drew 3-3 and all the kind of words that I've been hearing. But I, I try to focus on, on what I think and, and what the gaffer thinks and, and just move on from there. And I know that I've got loads of things to, to improve still and, and to be better and to, to work on. Well, the other big thing that's happened, mate, made your debut for Spain. <laughs> and not only that, it was in your hometown, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any more poignant than what a story. That was just written in the stars. Because uh, I wasn't meant to play that game. I was going to play against Iceland on the following Tuesday. Right, so what happened? Um, Robert Sanchez got uh, COVID on the game, like the day game. So when so did you find out? I found out two hours before the game or two hours and a half before the game, before the meeting. Did you have family there already? Obviously, I, obviously they were going to come to oh, watch right, the game, say, no matter what. They, they, they were going to come no and way. watch the game, no matter what. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't know until, until the meeting before the game that I was, I was going to play. And the following day, then when, when we trained, um, the gaffer, uh, the coach, Luis Enrique, said to me, he said, you were very lucky because you were going to meant to play next game. But you played yesterday at home. It was just written in the stars. I think it was just yeah. it, it had to happen. Obviously, playing playing in Barcelona, 18 years after uh, 18 years since the last time. Espanol ground next to Cornellà ground, the new ground. I, I used to train in a different one, but still, it's in Cornellà. It's like 20 minutes from my house. From yeah. my house. It was it was obviously it was incredible to to have. I had 
probably 100 people there to watching me. So, were you emotional? Uh, or was it just game focus? I was, I was a little bit. You know, when when he said my name, that was one of the first times I just felt my my heart beat raising like wow. loads. But obviously, when when you're in the in the game, it's just another another game for for you. And what one thing that it felt for that it was for ages, it was the anthem. The time really? of the anthems, obviously, it's the first time I experienced that, and I was just so roaring to to get going and and to play that those few minutes before the game with the anthem and you have to be quiet and and there's loads of thoughts that come that, that goes to, through your head. It was it was it was incredible and it was a, a hell of experience, obviously, to to make my debut at home. Amazing, man. Then obviously you went to Qatar, and I guess now is that the aim? Would to be number one? Yeah, that's 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 my aim to obviously carry on going, uh, being selected, making making the the, the new the new coach uh, keep selecting me and and try to fight to to get the number one spot. When you look back in 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 that position, representing your country, looking back at the journey that we've just discussed, where where are the big moments for you in your career? Looking back, obviously more into Blackburn. Uh, Southport for sure. That, I always said that was one of the turning points in my career to not just grow up as a as a as a player, if not as a as a person as well. Mm. That just matu maturity that I got to, during those three those three those three months I was there. The relegation uh, year that we played League One and the promotion, obviously that was very important to to get like games, I, ho I think I had 46 games, I think, or something like that that year. And obviously the uh, signing for Brentford and and everything, I think. Signing for Brentford that first season and even losing in the playoff final, that just made everybody even more stronger and, and hungry to, to to carry on trying to, to get promoted. And obviously the promotion the promotion uh, to the Premier League was, was massive and obviously playing the two years. Uh, in the Premier League. What do you think you've developed so far at Brentford as a player, would you say? Everything. Yeah. I think I've, I'm a different player as a... So I came as a player and I'm, if you see the difference from that player to now, it's completely different. The style of play, uh, the aggressivity, because I wasn't that aggressive at, the, at, at Blackburn. It was something that with the, with the coaches and the style of play of Brentford that I adapted myself to to that and that's why I think I'm that open-minded that I can adapt to, to every situation. I was going to say, is that not a bit like, you know, like, hang on, don't change me. I thought you signed me for what I am. And is, no. it, is it difficult as a keeper to go, hang on, you want me to change? But No, it was, something, it was something that's, uh, obviously when I came, it was Iñaki, the goalie coach. And obviously he was there the year before and, and he knew what Brentford needed and, and wanted. And obviously he implemented those values and those style of play into me. And then, because... I th I'm, I feel like I'm like a sponge that I, I take things very very quick, so that's why I, I changed that my style of play. So, in in, in aggressivity wise, like bolting behind and corners and uh, uh, crosses and all that, we with the high line that we have, we need to be a bit more higher and a bit more aggressive. So, that I just changed in in that year. I just changed my style of play and I just it just worked out perfect. It has worked out perfect, mate. And from someone who, as you said it yourself, was playing, I'm not going to say the word, <laughs> at the age of 15 or whatever, it's been a hell of a journey. Thanks so yeah, much. Thank you very much. Cheers.